With the Xbox One now on store shelves, some of the joystick staff want to look back at their favorite Xbox 360 memories. Hi, I'm Ludwig Kitzman, and I'm Editor-in-Chief of Joystick.com. My favorite Xbox 360 game is Vanquish, which is developed by Platinum Games. Uh, I like it a lot because it is utterly insane. It is an incredibly fast and fluid third-person shooter where your position is very important. You are actually able to move around the battlefield very quickly thanks to the suit that you use. And it can also overheat very quickly, so there is a very uh, challenging, exciting risk and reward balance there. Um, the weapons are really fun. The, the, the robots are on endless supply, the presentation is absolutely phenomenal, and it was the first time that I played a, a third-person shooter where I thought that the Gears of War formula was now officially stayed and boring. This is gonna be fun. Jess Condit, and I am senior reporter for Joystick, and my favorite game from the Xbox 360 era is Braid. Now, Braid holds a special place in my heart um, because it really is the first game that got me into indie games. One of the first times I ever played it was actually with a group of people. You know, it's this puzzle platformer, it was this weird little title that none of us had even heard of, downloadable on Xbox Live Arcade, what? Um, and a group of my friends, we all sat down and started playing it. One person holding the controller and the rest of us just shouting out no, go over there! No, 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 no! Turn back time and go back and get the key, then run and get the puzzle piece. It was just the coolest experience of a multiplayer game. That wasn't multiplayer. Um, it was obviously a single-player game. And it, it had such a unique and creative take on puzzles, on platforming, um, and even on storytelling. The narrative is outstanding, um, even though it is particularly vague in a, a lot of aspects. Um, but that kind of showed me, Braid really showed me, that games can be more than, uh, than you know, shooting or more than just trying to beat someone else. Um, even in this single player game, my friends and I had a great, great time playing it and then I played it alone. Um, and I had just as much fun but it was a very different experience. And now it's on all the platforms and I can still introduce it to people and people can still enter this game and have this fresh experience and it stays fresh um, throughout the years. So on Xbox 360 that was a very cool moment for me when I first played Braid. This is Alexander Slawinski, news editor here at Joystick. Uh, my selection for the best game from the Xbox 360 era was Battlefield Bad Company 2. Uh, it is the best in the series. Uh, yes, I understand that there are only technically two games in it, but uh, if we take the entire view of Battlefield, it is still the best in the series. It was fun, it was easy to get together with your friends. I made some great friends off of that game, uh, people I still play with to this day. Uh, hi, Team Joy. Uh, and it was just a super accessible, uh, didn't take itself too seriously a version of Battlefield before that series kind of veered off and uh, tried to emulate uh, another blockbuster shooter franchise. But to this day, uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2 stands up as the best in the series and one of the best multiplayer experiences on the Xbox 360. Hi, I'm Susan Arndt, and I'm the Managing Editor of Joystick. My favorite Xbox 360 game uh, actually isn't an exclusive, it's Bioshock. There are so many moments from Bioshock that stay with me even after all this time, like the first time you see a big daddy, or the splicer with the baby carriage, your entire encounter with Sander Cohen, and of course your descent into Rapture in the bathosphere, which is one of the greatest game intros of all time. Rapture didn't feel like any other game world I'd ever been in before, and I loved exploring it. I loved the Art Deco aesthetic, uh, I loved the way it used color. The joke about how all games are different shades of, of gray and brown isn't really that much of a joke, uh, but Bioshock is blue and gold and green and just all these lush, vibrant colors that make all of the decay that you're walking through that much more horrible. And the game pays just as much attention to its audio. It has an incredible soundtrack, 
the audio diaries were a brilliant way of conveying the story and and I even love that little clunking sound when you got a new objective I just love that everything about Bioshock felt unique and distinct and it still does I don't replay games very often, but I do replay Bioshock just so I can stay in Rapture for a little bit longer. My name is Sam Prell and I am a weekend editor for Joystick. My choice is Peter Jackson's King Kong for Xbox 360. Uh, and I want to start off by saying that I am 100% serious. Now, why did I pick this game? Where to begin? Uh, here are some objectively awesome things that Peter Jackson's King Kong has in spades. Uh, dinosaurs. Characters that exude good old-fashioned 1930s moxie. A giant monster gorilla. Dinosaurs. Fire. Fire that somehow sets a stone blade tip of a spear on fire. Dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> I should clarify that I'm being uh, a bit melodramatic for the sake of entertainment, but again, I'm absolutely 100% serious about how much I love uh, this game. Uh, King Kong also introduced us to one of the 360's greatest innovations, achievements. Uh, King Kong is famous for how easy it is for players to earn a full 1000 gamer score, and really all you had to do was complete the game. It wasn't the best movie game, it wasn't the best 360 game. It may not have even been the best 360 launch game, but it will always be the game I remember when I think back on my days with the system. My name is Ernest Cavalli, and I'm a contributing editor at Joystick. I want to talk about Red Dead Redemption for two important reasons. One, it's a very unique game. It's set in the Old West, which is strange because video games have never had that fascination with the Western that other media have had. Uh, television and movies both had very, very successful runs with the Western, as did books and comic books. But video games just kind of ignored that whole sand and cowboys aesthetic. Which is strange, because as Red Dead Redemption proves, the West is amazing. Uh, one moment you'll find yourself shooting your way out of a church surrounded by Mexican bandits, the next you're trudging through the snow hunting a bear with a knife, uh, you can be attacked by a rattlesnake, throw horseshoes, you can strap a maiden to a set of train tracks and laugh maniacally while curling your mustache and watching as a train splatters her all over the tracks. Not that that's an emotionally healthy behavior, but Rockstar actually gives you an achievement for doing so, so it's something that has to be mentioned. And, and it, it goes to show that Red Dead Redemption is the ultimate fusion of gameplay and storytelling that Rockstar has really been going for. Um, they have this trend of taking movie genres and building video games around them. Uh, this is their attempt at a western. And more so than any other Rockstar game to date, which, don't get me wrong, I've loved the majority of Rockstar games, Red Dead Redemption offers enough gameplay to complement a story that ends in one of the most poignant, touching moments I've seen in video games. I won't spoil the ending, because it's fantastic, but those who have completed the game know how affecting those final moments are after you've already spent 40 hours adventuring, hunting, and riding as John Marston. Hi, this is Thomas Schulenberg, Weekend Editor for Joystick. I spent most of my time in this console generation with the Xbox 360's library, and there's some good stuff in there, but really it was a pretty easy choice for me. I went with Rock Band 3, or more generally the Rock Band series, which I might have gotten into a little bit. I think there's about 550 songs on my hard drive between the discs and downloadable songs. Harmonix has a lot of my money. Rock Band is pretty much the definitive multiplayer experience I have from this generation of consoles, and to me it's really impressive because it has this ability to pull a whole room together whether they play video games or not. And the way Harmonix evolved the concept from Rock Band 1 to Rock Band 3 was really impressive too. Uh, with Rock Band 1 you just had the plastic instruments and the one vocalist, but by Rock Band 3 you had vocal harmonies, you had the uh, 102 button plastic guitar that you could learn tabs for songs off of or the real guitar that you could plug in. You had the keyboard, which everyone used to joke about because how could they possibly put it on the screen? And it's just, there's nothing missing from the experience. There's nothing that I say, oh, I wish they had done this, or I wish that they would have implemented this somehow, because they pretty much did everything. And Harmonix's efforts to support the series on a weekly basis with the DLC 
and I thought there was always a reason to come back and look for something new that I might want to play in addition to all the other songs I already had. So for me, Rockman 3 is basically the pinnacle of rhythm games and really the best multiplayer experience I had from this whole generation of consoles. Hi, this is Danny Cowan, contributing editor for Joystick.com. Deadly Premonition, I actually bought thinking that it would be a bad game, and for the first few hours it really was. It starts out with this weird survival horror style action-y thing that doesn't really work out. It stretches on for far too long, and the game makes a really bad first impression. After a few hours though, the game really opens up, and it turns into this open world, Twin Peaks inspired murder mystery where you're tracking down all these murder suspects as they go about their daily business in this small town. It's it's really open-ended and Shinmu-like in how it, the gameplay works out and depending on how deep you want to take the investigation you'll you you can t keep tabs on these town people and pretty much just stalk them as they go around town and uh, as you try to search for evidence. And in doing that, you'll unlock all this new information and all these side quests that really expand on the story. And by the end, that story just gets to be completely crazy and totally worth the adventure. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite 360 game just because it's so different from anything else on the 360. It feels like a game that came out from some alternate dimension where the Dreamcast never died and games focus on complex interlocking mechanics and like player driven narrative and that sort of thing instead of focusing on production quality and that's a direction I'd like to see more games take in the future. I'm Richard Mitchell, Reviews Editor. I think my favorite Xbox 360 game is probably Alan Wake. It's probably tied between that and Fez, but let's go with Alan Wake. Um, I think what I really love about Alan Wake is it does a really good job of blending the storytelling with the actual gameplay. Uh, I like that the collectibles in the game, the, the manuscript pages that you find, actually help fill out the story and they tell you about, in some cases, things that aren't even happening in the story yet. So you get foreshadowing, you get to fill in details that you wouldn't see otherwise, and it does something that Remedy, the developer, always does really well, which is tell a, a good story in an interesting way. And in some ways I actually think that Alan Wake is one of the best episodic games. Uh, even though all of the content is on one disc, uh, all the story is told episodically, so you can play it in a two-hour session, get a nice beginning, middle, and an end, and you have uh, a cliffhanger that sort of prompts you to move on to the next story section in the game. And it's handled really, really well. And it actually makes me really excited for their next game on the Xbox One, Quantum Break. And on top of all this, the gunplay is really fun. Uh, the dynamic between shining the flashlight on enemies to weaken them and then taking them out with your guns is great. And pretty much every single time you shoot someone with a flare gun, it's awesome. My name is Sinan Kuba, and I'm a contributing editor at Joystick. So my game of this generation for the Xbox 360 is Dark Souls. I had to pick Dark Souls, it just had to be done. For me, Dark Souls is a really interesting evolution of what Demon's Souls uh, did. Demon's Souls really provides this kind of strange nightmare in that it's scary, but not scary in that it's, you know, trying to uh, provide horror, it's really just trying to make you feel like you're going to lose your progress at any point. The way Dark Souls changes that up is rather than have you going from a start area, a starting point to a finishing point, you go through checkpoints in an open world. And I thought that really uh, played fascinatingly with the uh, a kind of risk reward mechanic in that rather than always feeling like you couldn't go down a, a side road because uh, you might end up dying and losing all your progress, you didn't actually know what was the end of that side road in, in Dark Souls. And, yeah, that, it made it a real quandary over whether you could go down that road and, and maybe you would find a, uh, another checkpoint to, to save and get those precious souls and, and uh, upgrade your character, or whether you're just going to find a boss and ultimately death or a dead end or whatever. And uh, it's just this really full open world as well. It wasn't just flat and wide as so many open worlds are in games, but it was it had a, it really used the, the y-axis. It really felt like there was stuff above or beneath you. And so it just did all these really interesting things with the Demon Souls uh, formula, and for me, it couldn't be 
it could not be on this list, so that's why I've picked Dark Souls. Hi, my name is Mike Suzak. I'm a contributing editor at Joystick.com. My favorite Xbox 360 game of all time, and it's not exclusive, is Mass Effect 2. This game did so much for me. I I'm a huge fan of the series in general, but like others, I believe Mass Effect 2 is the best one out of the whole series. It had a lot of technical improvements over the original game from the lighting to getting rid of that horrible tank that you had to drive around in the first game's missions to uh, just improve combat in general. But also like others, the thing that really stood out to me that made Mass Effect 2 one of my favorite games of all time is the plot and the characters. It starts out with this amazing scenario where Commander Shepard dies, is brought back to life by this kind of shady organization, and that's just the beginning of the game, which has a lot of epic moments throughout. Um, but the main thing that really stood out to me, that really made this the landmark game of the whole uh, of the Xbox 360 sort of experience for this console generation, was just the characters and the team that you had to put together when you're facing the collectors and this suicide mission. And uh, that team might be one of my favorite teams of sorts in all of gaming. Having to acquire characters like Thane and Jack and Morden and then go through their loyalty missions and really uh, get through their backstories and find out more about them was just very rewarding. And the way that that all culminates into the final suicide mission in which it, it really feels like you're all in it together. Uh, it really is the sort of experience and the sort of climactic event that I don't feel has been delivered in, in such a way as that game has. Uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of the sci-fi series that Mass Effect is, and like others have called it, it's sort of my Empire Strikes Back. It's that shining gem. And to me, that's what Mass Effect 2 is, and that's why it's my favorite game uh, on the Xbox 360. My name is David Hinkle, associate editor at Joystick.com, and my favorite Xbox 360 game is Mirror's Edge from DICE. Mirror's Edge is not only a unique game in that it's probably the only first-person parkour game uh, that has ever existed, at least to my knowledge. Um, it's also a game that's it's it's a very passive experience tied in familiar rapping. It's it's a game that looks like a first person shooter, by all intents and purposes should be played as a first person shooter, and yet totally encourages you to bypass all combat and look for alternative routes uh, around conflicts in the game, which is something I, I truly uh, want, uh, so much appreciate about it. Um, you, it has this really interesting uh, stylization for locomotion too. A lot of games, it's it's really, it's really tough to convey to the player where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do in the environment without like a flashing brick on the side of the building telling you that's the one you're supposed to jump and grab and that, therefore that's how you're supposed to scale the building. In Mirror's Edge, the faster you run, you start to see red elements in the environment. And they're, they're small at first, they're kind of things here or there, um, and it doesn't have too much of a visual impact, but it's enough for your eye to kind of dart there and say, okay, well, I'm moving quickly, that's the way I should go. Um, all the levels in the game are also designed to be speedrun. It's it's just an overall wonderful game that's so unique and that we haven't really seen any come from any other developer. Uh, for me, it's it's a game that I can play through the entire campaign and not fire a single bullet and still feel like an incredibly strong badass. And um, I think that's something amazing. I think that's an, an incredible feat. And for me, Mirror's Edge will go down as one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs>